Can, can we just drill down on Ukraine just a little bit? And I asked this question on Monday. We had a panel of uh, Western diplomats speaking of Ukraine. And I asked the question, why is it that, and I, from my admittedly Western perspective, Ukraine is clear cut. One country, a big country invaded its neighbor, trying to force its neighbor to adopt certain policies, et cetera. We would think the rest of the world would be on board of that. You can't change borders by invading another country. But when I go around, when I talk to Southeast Asian friends, they kind of are more like, yeah, well, Russia had security interests. They don't really care. That's a European problem. What's, what's your perspective as a Singaporean, Southeast Asian, but also someone who knows the world about why it is that this idea that the Ukraine war is a clear case of aggression for people like me is not so much for a lot of other people? And to you from the West, I must recall Kosovo, mm -hmm. which was part of uh, Serbia, mm -hmm. uh, which was broken from Serbia mm -hmm. by force. Mm -hmm. And Belgrade was bombed. There was a war which lasted, I think, two, three months mm -hmm. to break Kosovo off mm -hmm. from Serbia. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is source for the goose is source for the gander. I used to sit next to Lavrov and regional meetings because Singapore is S, Russia is R. <laughs> we were permanent neighbors. <laughs> and he was very upset by what the West did on Kosovo. Uh, so I don't think you can argue against Russia's intervention in Ukraine on the basis of a principle. Now, Singapore is, of course, upset. When you see a small guy being beaten up, we being smaller still, immediately sympathize with a smaller guy. But sometimes when you see a conflict, it's important to watch the entire video. And when you watch the entire video, you say, oh, well, it's actually not so simple. And if you want to find a solution, you better watch the entire video and not just depend on one snapshot. Ask yourself, why is it Lenin, Putin, Zelensky have the same first name? Who was Vladimir? Vladimir was the prince of Kiev, who, when he was baptized, had to decide between the Latin Rite and the Byzantine Rite at a time when the church was still united before the great schism of 1054. And in a famous passage, he wrote that he was so beguiled by the richness of Byzantium. So he became Orthodox. The Greek world became Orthodox. The Greek world which Rome never fully absorbed. And that division between Roman and Greek world persists till today. And Kiev was where Muscovy became orthodox. Now, you can't escape the fact that Ukraine has always been in between. If you look at that atlases of Europe 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, the borders have been shifting up and down. So Ukraine is between where tectonic plates meet. And I was convinced that Russia would move by the end of 2021. I told my children, because I read Putin's common history of Ukraine and Russia written in July. It was, to me, a, quite a good piece of historical writing. But when I mentioned it to my American friends, they laughed at me, they sneered at me. They said, this is an evil man. How can you read him? What can I say? But uh, and when he moved, I was sure there'll be, that Ukraine will be partitioned. And it'll be partitioned for decades, the way the Korean Peninsula has been partitioned, the way Kashmir has been partitioned, the way Cyprus has been partitioned. It may be possible after two, three years to have a ceasefire, but there'll be no peace agreement. And this partitioning of Europe is opening a new chapter in the history of all of Europe and marks a limit to EU expansion and maybe to NATO expansion. And in the nature of these things, when you push and the war doesn't fall, part of that force goes back into you, opening up cracks in your own society. So I asked myself, if I were a German and I read Seymour Hirsch, well, of course I cannot openly say that I believe what he said, but I've read him. You'll be thinking, why are we in this position? You are French, why are you in this position? And we are not careful 
we will see conditions which will lead to a resurgence of the right of the AFD in Germany, of Le Pen in France. So Europe is in a very difficult position. And the lack of clarity about Europe's future is very troubling. What is the end point? Let us say in the coming months, the Ukrainians make great advances. Where do you stop? Do you know when to stop? If you don't stop, then Russia will be forced to escalate. If the opposite happens, in the next few months, Russia makes great gains, and it doesn't know when to stop, then NATO will be forced to escalate one more cycle. I hope both sides will have a wisdom to know when to stop so that there is some stability. And the stopping point will lead to a partition of, Europe, of Ukraine.